Hi, uh, this is just a quick overview of all the features in the Pro Builder uh, as of the beta on uh, May 19th, 2012, just in case. Uh, so we'll be going over just what each of these uh, buttons and such can do in the tool. So let's uh, just jump right in here. So first of all, you can click anywhere on an object uh, when you're in the uh, Builder mode, and it will select it. And of course, you can move it around and such. Uh, if you need to exit the builder mode you can just click deactivate at the top and then uh, unity will function normally otherwise when this is activated by clicking on it um, if you select anything other than a builder object it will instantly deselect just because it needs to do some special things uh, during the selection process so we have to activate and deactivate that uh, otherwise so we are in the builder mode select uh, any object any builder object one of these boxes here and we have a couple options. Uh, first of all, we can create a new box instantly. Uh, if I click that button, it creates one just like so. Uh, it just creates it right at your view. Uh, I guess in this point it's a little bit through the plane, but it's uh, the same as doing game object, move to view. So pretty straightforward and works well. Um, so we also have enable collider and disable collider. And if you have any of these boxes selected, uh, once again, and click on enable collider, it will uh, generate a collider that fits the box just right and that will work of course even if this has you know uh, verts in some different positions or some such it doesn't have to be a perfect box uh, you can then simply disable that just the same uh, if you need to do that as well uh, we'll take a look at opti optimization once we get some other things uh, once we've gone th through some other bits uh, we'll move right to geometry uh, click on edit uh, when you have either one or multiple items selected select a couple here click on edit uh, and you get these little uh, gizmo uh, vertex options at the uh, at the point uh, uh, vertex really at each uh, each object it's, uh, points <laughs> uh, and with this you can just simply move any of them around by clicking uh, sorry if you if you click on the plane first move that around just like so it'll select all of them or you can select the individual and move it like such. Anything like that. So nice and simple to select an entire face or individual, however you like. And of course it can be between multiple objects, it does not matter. No problem. So that's edit mode. There's just about uh, nothing to it other than that. Like, uh, you know, like, like the uh, post says, uh, very simple, very easy to use, uh, intuitive, makes sense what it's doing. So moving on, uh, we can go into editing mode, and if you are already in the uh, in the geometry edit mode and you move to the uh, the texture edit mode, it will simply use the boxes you have selected. Otherwise, you can click done on the geometry and select different boxes if I want to, you know, just modify these now but not those two, and click edit under texture. So in this, we have uh, actually quite a few more options. Uh, the first thing. Uh, is the uh, quick paint options where we can apply materials to all selected faces or just uh, to one via some other options. So I can select any of the faces from the selection I created just uh, like such, standard unity procedure. And then uh, under the quick paint we can apply, we can add a material to the list, we can remove a material from the list or we can clear them all. Uh, I'm going to clear them all right now and then show you how to add some materials to this. So, for example, if I have these materials here and I want them to be quick paintable, simply select them in the editor, in the project area there, and click on Add, and it'll add them all into this quick list here. Uh, from there, you have the option to select multiple faces and just click Apply, and we'll drop it right on. Uh, or if you want, you can simply choose whichever one you want and right click and very simply drop on uh, any texture that you might want to be on there. So very nice and easy, uh, great way to quickly texture up uh, your level. Very simple. Uh, and as you see, of course, uh, it does not mess up the, uh, the light map, no problem there. Okay, so that's that. Uh, again, if you want to add another, you can always do that just the same, or you can simply click, uh, let's say I know I don't want this one anymore, I click remove, and it takes it out of the list. So, simple as well there. Move this back here.
Okay, so moving on, we have some texture settings here. Uh, once again, I can select any one of these planes. And let's select the one that still has a grid on it, so it's more obvious here. Okay, so I select the plane, and I can reset the texture to bring it back to its default setting, which it currently is right now. Uh, if I turn off tile, the texture will stretch to fit completely. Um, when I'm in uh, non-tiled mode, so this isn't checked, I can still move the texture back and forth. And the important part here is it is not modifying the material. It's only modifying the UVs on this object. So you're not adding any new draw calls or changing the material. Uh, it's just a great way to, to uh, add some uh, different texture looks to your scene. Um, use a, a texture in a lot of different ways that might otherwise not be possible. Uh, so you can do that. Of course, you can move it up and down on the Y. And if it's any other, you can move in the Z, of course. Now, whichever direction corresponds to the axes here. Uh, okay, so you have that when you're in the non textured mode. You can also rotate the texture, of course. Simple as that. Most times you're probably using, you know, just straight uh, 90 to 180 and so forth if you want to move uh, like wood grain or something in a different direction. Uh, but anything works there. Uh, or for example, say I want uh, this to go sideways. I can just go in here, type in 90, and there you have it. And once again, this is not modifying the material at all, just the UVs on here. So, great way to do that. Um, Alright, so if it's in the tiled texture mode, I get a couple more options uh, just for scale down here. And just the same thing as the others, only modifying the UVs, I can change the scale. So basically the tiling amount up and down for either of these options. Let's go a little closer there. So again, this is just changing the tiling basically for the scale here. So very simple. Uh, rotate, of course, works just the same. No difference there. And if I hit reset texture in case, you know, I've gotten these values all sorts of crazy, bam, and it'll just uh, knock it right back to being a nice simple texture. Uh, simply tiled, I mean. So, a uh, great way to use that, just for a little more example again, say I have this uh, sort of rusty metal texture, whatnot, and I want it to fit uh, exactly to this cube. Uh, all I would need to do is turn off tiling, and this is definitely not what we want. Um, so it's probably best if we say just rotate this by 90 and then maybe scale it up just a bit on the Z so it's going to fit and then I can move it over and maybe something like that or such. Uh, Perhaps I think uh, you know that looks better. Uh, don't worry. Um, you can of course also select multiple of these at once and modify uh, any of their uh, options at the same time. So nice and simple. Uh, okay, so that's it for materials. Other than one last thing, there's a couple special materials that I have uh, added in that come with the project. So if you uh, check in the regular materials folder. There's a collider and a no draw. I'm going to select these and just add them in. So now if I select that no draw, and I can either apply it this way, or again just right click, or maybe I want to choose the uh, collider and drop it on. I'll add in these special materials that um, anything that has a no draw on it, when you click the enable optimization button up here, it will automatically hide it. And the same thing for the collider texture. Uh, it'll also make sure that light maps are not generated for this item uh, and they're not used with occluding at all. So basically these are just non-existent faces. Use them a lot for uh, if you have maybe just, uh, well for the no draw, anything that will definitely never be seen. Uh, and the collider is great for if you're using these boxes, one of their best uses really is to create custom collision geometry where you just need sort of a boxy shape around something and you don't want to go use an external tool to create it. Uh, just drop on this uh, very simple uh, collider texture and you get a nice uh, easily see-through collider and then once you uh, are done texturing just the, uh, enable the collider oops I just enabled it on all those at once um, but we can simply turn that off oops like so uh, and now this has a collider built in for it uh, and once again if I edit this geometry 
I can do anything I like to it. That's maybe uh, making it a little crazy. <laughs> uh, anyway, we can do what we want to that geometry. And when you click done, the uh, collision is updated just as it ought to be for it. Uh, it also automatically generates uh, rigid body settings based on its exact uh, volume and a density that you set. Uh, that's not quite in and fully working yet, but it is coming up soon and will be in the final. So, um, or maybe the version afterward, we'll see, hoping. Uh, but it's coming anyway. So that's a nice use. And then, uh, so last again with this optimi optimization button here, if I click enable, it will automatically hide all those planes so I'm not adding any draw calls. Or disable, and it'll bring them back in so you can see them uh, and edit them. Uh, same thing goes for if I were to add in any no draws, of course. Once I enable that uh, optimization, the no draw is hidden. Uh, so just a good quick way to make sure things are a little more efficient. Uh, one thing again, since all of these um, all of these objects are actually using the same material, they are gen generating no new draw calls, only the same one. Uh, even though it does not matter how much you may edit that uh, texture scale or offset or anything like that, it's still just one draw call for each of these planes that are using the same texture. So, a uh, great way. It's uh, super efficient, um, especially if you're, uh, you know, using these draw call and uh, collider textures wherever you can, and then enabling and disabling the optimization as needed. Okay, so that's it for uh, all the uh, options so far with the current. Uh, Pro Builder setup with a beta, so I hope you can take a look at it. And I'm definitely looking for feedback and all the things that happen to be broken. I'm sure there'll be some, so I can get those fixed up and have this out on the asset store. Thanks so much for looking.